Welcome back. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about the concept of proxy contract, and we will see how one contract can interact with another contract. Now, if you remember, in the first lesson, we've said that contract is the highest form of object that can exist in Ethereum. Contract is the first class citizen in Ethereum. Contracts can perform whatever type of interaction that, that the user itself can perform. It can store variables, it can send ether, it can call other function, and so on. And so we can use one contract in order to interact with another contract. And in this video, we will do so by declaring two contracts. One contract will be called child. This contract will contain a variable, which will be the name of the child, and it will contain a function, which will be to name this child. And then we will create another contract. And that other contract will be called parent. And this parent contract will have a function which will take a string from the user. It will take this string. It will call the set name function in the child contract. And it will give this set child name function the string which was inserted by the user who used the parent contract. So let's see it in action. We're going to declare a contract child. This child contract will have a string variable, public string variable, which will be called um, child name. Name. There we go. This contract will have one function. Let's call this function set child name. It will receive a string from the user. Let's call this string underscore name. And it will set this child name variable to be the underscore name which it received from the user. So this is it, a very basic contract. We've already created a very similar contract in the first, in the first lesson. Only then, instead of child name, we've had something called brand name. This time it's just going to be a child name. And now this is where we're going to do something a bit different. We're going to declare another contract which will be the parent contract. This contract will contain the address of this child contract. So we're going to have a variable, which will be an address type variable, public. And let's call this variable your child address. And we need to set a constructor function, so function parent. And this function will ask us to insert the address of this child contract. And we will only need to do it once whenever we deploy the contract. So it will ask the user to insert an address. This address is going to be address of the child contract, sorry, contract, there we go, and it will set this variable, your child address, to be underscore address of the child contract, there we go. So now, whenever we deploy this parent contract, we will be asked by the constructor function, to insert an address, the address of the child contract, which means the address of this contract, and this address will be stored under the variable name your child address. There we go. And now we want to give this parent contract another functionality, and this functionality would be to name the child. So let's call this function 
name your child this function will take a string from the user this string we're going to call it my child name now what we want to do we want that whenever i deploy or whenever i execute this function name your child it will automatically look at this contract child it will look in this contract for this function set child name and it will execute this set child name function with the child name which i will insert and in order to do so we need to declare another object another contract type object and this object in our case is a child object the child was defined over here at the top and now i can use it in order to declare a new object in my parent contract and this new object will be of the type child so this child will be called my child because this my child is a child object which was declared over here this object over here will also contain all the information which is specified in this contract over here so this object my child will also contain this function over here set child name and i only need to give it now the address of this contract because just knowing that there is something called child contract is not enough we also need to tell it where to look for this child contract so i'm going to say that look for this child in your child address and then we can tell it to use this my child object which is this child contract that can be found in this address and call the function set child name which was declared over here in order to use this function i need to give it a string and the string is going to be my child name and this is it now whenever we will use this parent contract and execute this function name your child it will automatically look for a child contract as declared over here it will give it the name my child and it will look for this contract in your child address we will manually insert it when we first deploy this parent contract once it find this child object in this address it will ask it to execute the function set child name which was declared over here in the child contract and it will execute it with this string my child name so when i will look into this child contract i will see that the child name was changed to the name which i've inserted over here so let's see it in action let's copy this code as is and go to our mist wallet and now i can choose to deploy either a child contract or a parent contract we are going to start by deploying this child contract because we will need the address of the child in order to deploy the contract of the parent so let's deploy it there we go this is our child contract it has this string variable called child name it is empty at the moment and we can set a child name over here if we want to and it will give this child a name you know what let's do it now i'm going to call it bobby this is going to be my child name let's execute this function there we go we've used this 
set child name. In order to give this variable child name um, a name, we called it Bobby. And now I want to deploy the parent contract. So in order to do so, I need to know the address of this child contract. So let's copy the address. Copy anyway, thank you. Let's, um, I'm going to paste it over here. We're going to use it in a second. And let's copy our code back to the missed wallet. Over here in the middle, let's paste the code. And now we can deploy the parent contract. It asks us to insert the address of the child contract. I've saved this address over here at the bottom. There we go. Let's paste the address. And now we can deploy this parent contract. This is it. Our parent contract was deployed. You can see it over here. It says that this is my child address and it gives me the address of the child contract. And it gives us the address of the child, which we have deployed earlier. And you can see over here on the side, pick a function. Let's pick name your child. And let's give our child a new name. Let's call him Dan. This is going to be the name of the child. So we're going to execute this function. There we go. And now if we will go back to our child contract, we should see that the name was changed from Bobby to Dan. There we go. So let's summarize it in a very simple way. We have declared this child contract. Pay attention, we needed to declare the, the child contract before we can declare the parent because we need the functionality and the address of this child contract in order to make this parent contract work. So it might be a bit confusing because you might expect that the child will be declared after the parent. But in order to use the functionality of a child contract, you first need to know what is this functionality and you need to know what is the address of this contract. So you will always be forced to declare a child contract before you can declare a parent contract. It might seem a bit confusing at first, but when you think about it, it's actually start to make sense. You need this information before you can actually use it. You need to know what is the address of this child contract before you can actually call this contract. So again, you will always need to deploy the child before you can deploy the parent. So after we have deployed the child contract and we know what is the child address and we know what is the functionality of this child, then we can build our parent contract. This parent contract will have an access to this child contract. It will call it as my child and it will look for this child contract in this address, in your child address. Once it has declared this my child object, it can use the functionality set child name, which was declared over here in the child contract. And it will simply give it this argument, my child name. So this is it on how a contract can interact with another contract, how one contract can call another contract. And now this is something which I strongly recommend. Once you've reached this level, this part of the course, I strongly recommend that you will start to build a couple of parent and child contracts of your own with some other variables as well, such as let's say um, unsigned integer, public child age, or let's say parent's name as well, string public, let's say name of the father, for example, and try to think of a way you can interact with those type of variables. And if you made it this far in the video, you should be able to do so and interact with those type of variables. Um, just as we did over here with name your child, we can also set age and set the name of the father, etc. So just try it a little bit, get the feeling of it, and this will help you to summarize 
what um, we've talked about so far. And this is it. In the next video, we're going to talk about events. And I will see you then.